Hey everybody, uh, Judah Hoover here coming to you from the Landlords and Investors Mastermind Group walking a great property in downtown Harrisburg. This is a townhome property, this uh, blue, or, excuse me, green and uh, beige thing that we have here behind us. Um, rehabbed property uh, in great shape, ready for rent, uh, but there's still some things that we can look at to see about maximizing uh, rehab and, or excuse me, maximizing the rental value that we're going to be able to get for it. Uh, it's in downtown Harrisburg, close to a lot of restaurants, um, most importantly, um, two pretty big hospital operations here, so a lot of great uh, nurses are going to be uh, within easily walking distance to the property. Um, Harrisburg is the uh, city capital, our state capital, as, as many people know, but also the other great thing about this property is uh, there's a lot of great downtown life in Harrisburg. So uh, some major hotels, um, a lot of great dining options, um, some nightclubs and some other things like that. And this property is really close uh, to downtown uh, nightlife, great for young professionals and nurses as we've talked about. So let's go on the inside and take a look at this B plus pushing uh, an A quality property. Okay, so first thing, uh, First thing that I noticed when I walked up to this property here was this uh, patch of fresh cement. You can see what kind of the rest of the cement looks like. And then there's this patch right here. So obviously um, gas was added at some point uh, to this property. Just one of the things uh, to take a look at. Uh, first floor entry and nice big open, expansive floor plane. Kind of a simple rehab. Uh, these are not original hardwood floors. Uh, they're not the highest quality replacement hardwood floors either, uh, but they certainly do look uh, pretty good. Nice uh, big kitchen here. Uh, this right here is one of the problems that you get into sometimes when you try and put um, ceramic tile in. Uh, there's luxury vinyl plank is kind of a, uh, a better option. They also make tiles in that form. Uh, Dora Ceramic is the brand that I always uh, go with. Nice little small backyard there. Obviously it wasn't mowed all this summer and so you've just got what was some weeds now laying dead. But there's not a lot of trash or junk or debris back there. So that looks pretty good. Uh, bathroom here, uh, kind of a small bathroom, but right off the kitchen. You can't see it. There's a little bit of waving and weaving here, uh, up and down motion with this kitchen floor. Not a uh, problematic little bit of cosmetic stuff like that on uh, the plaster walls. Again, not something that's a big concern. And can you see those nail? holes popping through from uh, the drywall uh, there. So again, not a big deal. Uh, I forgot to turn my flashlight on, so let's go into the basement and see what we can find down there. All right, here we go into the basement. What is, did I turn that light on or not? All right, I do not know if there's a light that comes on down here or not. Um, but here we have a, a gas hot water heater elevated up off the ground. Very wise choice. We can tell it's a gas hot water heater uh, because there's that gas line coming in and then there's also the few flue for the escaped combustion gases out that way. We have a gas system here, right? And we know that because of uh, that line right there coming in, but we don't see any ductwork, right? There's no air handler or anything like that. Uh, all we see is a bunch of big old casting pipes. So what is our guess gonna be there? Obviously this is either a steam system or a hot water system, and we're probably going to see radiators throughout the rest of the house. Uh, this has been insulated at some point, so I can't see uh, a lot of the floor joists. So what you do is, where you do see something, you just poke your head up in there and take a look around. I've kind of already done that here with this. 
Um, over here we have an oil tank, as is often the case in these houses, and you never ever remove an oil tank when you see it in a basement like this. And we see a oil line coming off of this, going underneath some stuff here, coming across, and then it does terminate. So we know that this is not an oil system, and this is purely here uh, as a relic of the past, and we're not going to worry about it. And hot damn, there's actually about a third of a tank of oil in there. So if you ever wanted to uh, siphon or pump that out, I've no, I don't know that I've ever seen that or given that any consideration. But that might be fifty to seventy-five, a hundred bucks worth of oil. Probably not worth your time. So I thought this was kind of cool. <clears throat> Somebody put on these two with Sharpie. Junction box only. So this is not the main paddle box. Very cool of them to do that. So we know that we need to be on the lookout in the rest of the house for wherever the main paddle box might be. Gas meter here looks somewhat newish as we determined it would probably see that from uh, the front of the house. Coming back here, just looking along the side I don't see any crumbling foundation, main sewer line coming along the back side of the wall there. Nice little scary <clears throat> old replacement dishwasher, plenty of cobwebs, plenty of nonsense. Again, every single floor joist that I can see looks straight and fine, and I don't see anything that is sistered or cracked. I don't see any issues with termite damage or anything like that. So I feel pretty good about everything that I'm seeing here. Great, <clears throat> let's go up and take a look at the rest of the house. So here's on this wall, some of this parging, some of the white mortar plaster type stuff that they put over top is coming off. Not a big deal. Uh, looks like they used maybe too hard of a mortar when they put these bricks in. And some of these bricks, the face has popped off over the years. You know, one in every 50, one in every 100. They're, they're crumbling just a little bit, but underneath there is really still very solid. Bricks are like French bread, crusty on the outside, soft on the inside. So at some point in another 5 or 10 or 15 years, you know, one out of every 50 or 100 of these bricks might need replaced. But the rest of this is all very solid, and I don't see a whole lot of evidence of repointing or anything like that that's gone on over the years. So I feel really good about this foundation, even if there are some problems with it. Now, this property, oh, look at this. Ha! Remember, I said we're going to be keeping an eye out for the panel box in the rest of the house. And I believe, dun, 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 we have found it. Main panel box for the house. Looks like a 200 amp service. What's nice about that is it's nice and accessible should an electrician ever need to get access to it or anything like that, but it's also kind of tucked away, painted white to match in with the rest of the house. Let's take a look upstairs. So I think that nice big house like this Kind of a utilitarian renovation. This is bathroom number two that we're seeing. Kind of beige, a little bit of a nicer deal on the shower there. Nothing super duper fancy, but a tile shower. Kind of takes it one step up. Um, second bathroom. First bedroom. Okay, and our radiator. So, a couple of things here. Whenever you see a valve like this on the side, you know you're dealing uh, 
with a steam system whenever there is one pipe and one pipe only going into the house you're doing with the steam system not an expert that's my understanding there's pros and cons of steam and hot water we'll talk more about that later great <clears throat> so there's kind of like this little three step down dun 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 four step up thing dun 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 can you see that there that kind of separates the front of the house from the back of the house a little landing uh, kind of interesting kind of a little bit funky bedroom number two bedroom number three front of the house bedroom overlooking the apartments across the way and some of the skyline of Harrisburg um, <clears throat> I think that just because of so there's also this nice big almost like you know not it's almost too small to be a sitting area but you know you could put a bookshelf on either of these two walls and do something but then look again so we've got five or six steps up and then three more steps up into what is a third bathroom and what's nice about this bathroom and the little tiny half shower that's in it is it gives you another bathroom but I mean does this work if I do this can you see this so you know, if you're sitting here on the throne, you can't stand up too terribly quick. At this side of the room, plenty of room. At this side of the room, not so much. Makes it just a little bit funky, but it also means that you do have another bedroom there, so that's kind of cool. And then this is almost like the main bed. Again, we transition back into hardwood floors, have a nicer replacement radiator, front of the house overlooking the street, big French doors, double bowl sink, soaking tub, standing shower, pretty darn nice. You're not going to be able to see any of that because of the sun, are you? Um, but the roof out there was recently replaced. Nice big mirror, nice fan. Yeah, so I mean, this is like a a B quality rehab on this place. I think you're going to be looking at between a hundred and thirty, hundred and forty thousand dollars because you're going to be able to rent this out to nurses, and they're going to be able to split up the rent as many different ways as they are. I think that you're definitely going to be looking at $14,000, so $1,400, excuse me, $1,400 uh, a month in rent. So the 1% rule definitely applies here. Can you get for the property in rent what every month what 1% of the value is? It's really easy to do that math. Take off two zeros. So for a house that's worth 130 to 140, I want to be at one fourteen. I want to be at fourteen hundred dollars or more a month in rent. I definitely think that that can be achieved here. I definitely like this house. I definitely think that you're going to get nice, stable tenants, great occupancy here, and all kinds of good stuff. So I'm just walking back through the house as I turn this off. So downtown properties like this are good. Uh, I think that this is also a house that if you held on to it for a long time and later on you wanted to come back through and do like a really nice high-end rehab here, you could sell this property for a top dollar at the top of the market and really have a competing offer situation. Harrisburg is gorgeous. Harrisburg is beautiful. I definitely encourage anybody who is thinking about investing in investing in beautiful downtown Harrisburg this is what you're looking for great blocks in great areas of the city with great property like this in your portfolio you almost can't go wrong all right everybody uh, that's it for another video I hope you like this video please 
like it and uh, give me a share with your friends who would be looking for other great free content like this, uh, who are looking to kind of get more than just what the books, tapes, and seminars people will tell them. I hear a lot of people tell me that nobody actually gets out in the street and walks properties and shows them what real finished product looks like and what real houses can and should look like when you're all said and done. Um, and that's what I want to do here. That's uh, my mission. Uh, my name is Judah Hoover. This is the Landlords and Investors Mastermind Group, and I hope you guys have a great day.